Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. In today's episode of Dye Pup PS, I'm going to dye some Luminance yarn from Knit Picks. This is a lace weight yarn that is 100% silk. And I've never dyed 100% silk yarn before. So I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> I'll talk about that more as things go on. But I'm really, really excited. This is a beautiful two-ply yarn that has a lovely sheen that gives it its name. It reflects the light and, well, I hope it's going to take up color like a dream. I know that in general, silk takes more time, a little more acid, for colors to absorb. So we'll play around. Well, with one technique, because I have one skein. But before we go and dye this skein, I thought that we would dye a couple wool silk blends, so that way I can ease myself into it, because even those types of yarn take more time for colors to absorb. So, let's get into it. Uh, I am pre-soaking all of our yarn in some plain tap water uh, for at least 24 hours. I want a long soak because silk can take a little more time to absorb liquid and if we make sure that it is completely saturated, we should have an easier time applying dye. Now, I mean, I, I'm just nervous because I'm afraid that I'm not going to like the results, but I think that I should just get over it and go for it. I have also added 200 grams of Knit Picks Gloss fingering weight yarn, which is 70% merino, 30% silk. This is a base I've dyed a bit more, and it's here as a counterpoint, I suppose, for the technique. So that way we can see how it's responding to the same colors, and if maybe we end up seeing more pigmentation here than in the silk. Which, I'll be honest, that silk doesn't look particularly absorbent, so we will see. The silk and silk blends have soaked for maybe about 36 hours, and about 12 hours ago I added a skein of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, as just a control, as something that I am used to dyeing. And I'm now going to go ahead and add half a cup of vinegar. This is more than what I might normally include and add in a pre-soak like this, but I want our yarn to be acidic uh, so that way we can add color and hopefully set that color on the yarn. So I'm going to let this sit another, I don't know, 15 minutes while I get everything else set up. Today I'm sort of making a lot up as I go along and changing things a lot. Uh, I have protected my work surface with a shower curtain and then added on some plastic wrap because I'm planning to hand paint and then I was like, oh, I can then wrap in steam. But before putting the yarn on here, I think I want to put 300 grams of yarn in the steam pan, even though things are more compressed, and to try to add color to it in the pan. And I'm not sure if this is going to be the right decision, but I kind of wish that this were larger, but this would allow me to add a larger volume of water, um, volume of dye to our yarn, and so that could be helpful uh, as I am setting this up and be a little less messy. So I think this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to be using this pan mainly as the vehicle for that hand painting. I want to play with gray and pink today, um, and so we've got some 2% stock solution of silver gray from Dharma, I've got a 1% stock solution of a magenta sapphire blue mix, and then a tiny amount, maybe the dregs of some 1% stock solution of uh, Dharma True Black, which is really only here if I feel like the gray isn't going far enough and if I want to add more pigment. Uh, because I find that the hue in Silver Gray and True Black are very, very similar, but uh, True Black is significantly more pigmented, even with the Silver Gray at a 2% stock. It's possible that this isn't going to be pigmented enough, but I've got three cups of water here. And I'm going to add a tablespoon, so just 15 milliliters of this pink mixture to one. 
Uh, I, I don't intend for the colors to necessarily be pastel, but I'm probably starting off in that pastel range. I'm now going to add a tablespoon, and there's residual pink, of our 2% gray. Um, I might decide I want to increase that color, but I think just to have on hand to this last one, I'm going to add a tablespoon of that black. All right, and now let's get our uh, pan set up. I'm putting the 300 grams through my spin dryer to remove excess liquid to make it easier to apply color. This is not something that I often do, but I'm doing it today because uh, it makes it a little easier to apply color um, to our yarn. And so I'm just going to lay the yarn and arrange it in here, starting with our 100% silk, um, our 30% silk, and then just our superwash wool, which is our, which will take up the most dye, and that's why I have it the furthest away from that silk over here. And now I suppose we can just start adding some color in. So right away. Um, maybe spinning the liquid out of the silk. Oh, okay, I guess it's going in. I was like, maybe it's a bit of a silk uh, mistake because it was soaking really quickly into um, the wools, but not as quickly into our uh oh silk. Okay, I think I gotta shift the way I'm doing this. This is why I have a protected work surface. I'll probably eventually start pouring, but I wanted to, I don't know, start slow, um, just to see how these colors sort of sink in and absorb on this yarn. And so you could pour. This is just allowing me to more slowly apply the color. And in general, so I have three cups of dye that I've made already. In general, I feel like 100 grams of like stroll can absorb about uh, two cups of water, uh, but that's just sort of a starting point. But okay, this is this is soaking in, and I think that this this could work. And I often don't bother spinning out that liquid, but if there was more liquid in here, then it would be harder for the color to necessarily go in, and it's definitely sinking in the easiest, I would say, on the stroll, and we've got plenty of dye to mix more of this color, but I just wanted to see how far it would go. And now that I'm pressing it, um, not perfect penetration all the way to the bottom, but there's, there's some, so that is something. All right, let's take a look at our gray, which you can see, like, this is not, like, a tiny bit of color, but look at how, <laughs> this is our 100% silk, look at that run down. I mean, I pre-soaked it for a while, and I spun out a lot of liquid, but I think that uh, if I didn't have it pre-soaked at all, it would be really, really hard to get these colors to sink in. So this is this is interesting to me, but I was afraid I didn't want to just do my standard low immersion, which honestly my standard low immersion isn't that low immersion. It's more of a uh, fuller immersion type technique, but I was nervous because because I was afraid that it just wouldn't absorb color, and I wanted to bring that dye more in contact. Um, but now I am curious. Uh, I do have my awesome reusable zip ties on here. Okay, it's not going through all the way, so we definitely need to add more liquid, but we'll see, I guess, how this goes. So this gray is a really nice gray. I don't know if you can tell the hue difference between the three fiber types, 
but let's take a look at our black. And yeah, and now of course I'm blinking. Did I just do one tablespoon of the gray? I think I did. But okay, in all three cases, I did add a tablespoon of dye to one cup of water. But I do want to add that the silver gray is at a 2% stock and the black is at a 1%. Um, and so the black is slightly more pigmented than the gray, not significantly more pigmented just slightly and it is even now immediately and I don't think I'm adding more pigment there but the colors feel more pigmented on the stroll so the one closest to I think the bottom of the camera um, versus the silk and silk blends so that is what I'm seeing right now and I'm definitely going to need to mix more of the colors. I'm not going to have more of the black, um, or I mean I might not have as much of the black, but I figured it'll add some tonal variation. Um, wow, that's not sinking in that fast. So the colors, <laughs> this everything's a learning process, but I think that with bigger volumes I might swap to just straight pouring. We will get there. Voiceover. Um, all of the liquid that I'm adding will be mixed at the same proportions of one tablespoon of the dye to a cup of water, with maybe the exception of the black, but I'll, I'll try to pop back in if I change that. But at this opportunity, I would like to take a moment to give a huge shout out to Karen Siegel, Dorothy Young, and the rest of the Chemnitz Fiber patrons. You'll see some of their names going across the screen right now. Uh, Patreon is a wonderful platform for viewers to support content creators they really enjoy, and I offer some fun perks to patrons, like shoutouts in the Dye PS series. Uh, all patrons can vote in the direction that the content for the Dye PS series goes, and they can get advance notice of shop restocks, exclusive permanent coupons to my Etsy shop, and more. You can find details about the Patreon in the video description and in the top right hand corner of the screen. As I'm going in and adding this liquid in here, it is so clear how little liquid there really is in this yarn. And at least near where it's starting, I absolutely would want to steam set this versus try to put this pan on the stove and heat it up. There is not much liquid in here at all. And I'm honestly concerned about burning it. <laughs> but as we go through and add more and more liquid and more and more dye, I'm curious how I will feel once I feel that this colorway is more complete. But since it is taking more time for the liquid to soak into our silk blends, I'm really happy I'm doing this in a pan versus just straight on the countertop. Even if I transfer the yarn to go and set it, just because this is, uh, yeah, it gives time for that dye to sink into the yarn, whereas otherwise it might have like been running off the counter and I might have been needing to actually apply more pressure and risk. I mean, I don't think silk felts, but I certainly don't want to snag or damage it. So, those are considerations. It became apparent pretty quickly that the uh, colors strike much, much faster to the, to the super wash yarn than the silk blend or the 100% silk, where the color goes through a bit further. Like the on the super wash yarn, the colors are almost striking right where I'm pouring them. So that's worth keeping in mind and uh, as I'm going through with this technique. I definitely kept mixing and adding more liquid. At the, stop, <laughs> at the start, we started with three cups with the three colors. I added a fourth cup that was more pink and then I added six more cups that were the gray mixture. So another six tablespoons, or about 90 milliliters of that 2% gray stock solution, which since it's 2%, the 90 milliliters is equivalent to 1.8 grams of dye. But I mean, there's more because I had some more at the beginning, but so far in the medium stage, that is how much was going in. And then I would need to flip the yarn to see if I needed even more color. I just flipped over all of the yarn, and there's a lot of liquid in here. Like, I could go and squeeze out liquid, but 
Um, there's still, actually that color is mostly cleared. Okay, well in the silk, and I'm not going to squeeze the 100% silk, but in the silk blend, um, there's some more pigment. But the pigment, you can see this. If anything makes it apparent, apparent, there's more the most white here in the stroll, and I even already had poured some color on that side. Uh, less white on our wool silk blend, and then very little on this 100% silk blend. Um, which, even though we're adding similar amounts of dye to all three, um, at least I'm trying, I have a feeling that the color will be the least pigmented on the silk, uh, mainly just because um, silk tends to take more color as, as it is, and so that is just whoop, my hypothesis. Um, but we will certainly see. And the goal is to try to not have a ton of white. There's some pink that has gone down. This is not the most perfect um, hand-painted thing. And oh, we've got some white there. So maybe I'll need to mix one more gray and one more pink. Um, but I mean, I'm happy with where things are going right now. And we've almost got enough liquid that I think I could try heating this low immersion. But let's see. Let, let's go in and add the other colors. I'm now trying to think about just how much color we've added in total. Uh, 3, 4, plus 6, that's 10, plus 2. So is it 12? Let me know in the comments if it's actually more than 12 and I'm mistaken. <laughs> so I probably am adding more color over here, but the difference between like this low liquid setup that we have here and something that might have been hot, like more immersion dyeing is that based on the position and the space that things are located, the stroll isn't capable of just absorbing more dye. It might to an extent, but since the dye out here isn't traveling over there, it can't in that more simple way. So like if I was going to take all three of these skeins and dip dye them at the same time, that wouldn't really work if I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going back to my, I guess, turkey baster, my basting wand, um, just to help me spot add dye in these spaces that I think need it most. And I do think I want to add more vinegar to here because for all that this is hand painting and we did soak the yarn with vinegar, um, yeah, we're gonna just want some more acid present. So whether I should add water from the pre-soak or just add acid directly, then I'm not sure, but definitely we are hitting a point where I would be comfortable heating this. I would be more comfortable heating this like on the stove than steaming. But oh, there's another choice, everyone. Um, instead of heating this directly on the stove, I could set it aside, cover it, set it aside for you know, 12, 24 hours and then steam set and sort of do that more cool that kind of approach. And so the benefit to this second option would be that uh, things, it would just give time for things to slowly bind and even out some of the colors in some ways. But I mean, as I said, like a lot of the color has absorbed on to our stroll already and there's gonna be more modeling a little more of that variation in there. I'm just checking. Okay, that's good around the tie for that one. And uh, that's pretty good too. So I've got a bit more dye that I'm gonna go ahead and add just because we have it. Um, and sort of spreading that through. And I think I'm gonna do the same with this pink. Um, but now at this stage, we are 
I mean, and I know that what I call low immersion might not be that low for some other dyers, um, but this water volume, even if this is 12 cups of water, this water volume is pretty low. I have to say though, I'm enjoying setting up the hand painting like this. Um, it's less stressful than if it was hot already uh, because it's easier for me to manipulate and add color to specific spots. So I like that. And I like that it's not as messy as if I was doing this on my counter. I'm not as worried about spills. So those things are all good. Now there's still some pink in here because I didn't rinse it out, but let's add some vinegar. So that's one, two, and did that color, did you see that shift? So I do that, I'm not sure if that's my imagination. Okay, that's three, four, five, six. Um, six tablespoons, and now I'm curious. Okay, maybe not, so maybe we're gonna be closer to eight. Ah, there's a tiny bit in here, may as well just be done with it. Um, I did remove my gloves, otherwise eh, I'll, I'll put one back on. This way I can kind of help that vinegar move through all the fiber a bit. But yeah, I mean this setup certainly is easier to set up more skeins of yarn in this similar way. It's not perfect, but you know, for, for trying it this way, which I don't think I've done before, is always fun. Uh, as I come and turn on the heat, it's also worth noting that when I first mix the colors, I'm like pastel, and not really, but we'll see how things are when it's dry. I don't wanna overheat this, so I am starting immediately with the heat on low. And I'm gonna slowly, I think over the next 20 minutes, bring up this heat uh, so it can be hot. I do have one more skein of gloss fingering weight yarn pre-soaking and I've got some more of this pink and gray and black. So I think that I'll play with that um, later on and maybe create a colorway that uh, with these same colors using slightly different techniques. I'm not sure if the, I will include that in this Dye Pop PS episode or if it'll become another separate bonus video. I'm leaning towards the latter, but uh, I do intend to play with that. And really quickly, I'm already starting to see some steam come up here. And you know what I think I'm gonna do? Something that I don't often do. I went and got some tin foil to cover things up. This means it's gonna be harder for me to check in on the yarn, but since it's covered, things should heat up a little more quickly, a little more evenly, and it's not gonna lose as much liquid as it might otherwise. So, um, yeah, I'll come back in about 20 minutes and check in. It's only been 15 minutes, but hear that sound? I hear bubbles. So we're getting nice and steamy. I'm switching to the lowest setting, um, and now I am going to set the timer for another 20 minutes. All right, 20 minutes later, let's remove that tin foil. Running to get a dedicated dye spoon. That is clear, but that's our stroll. That is clear. That looks clear. Huh, it looks a little bit like some of the pink spread down there, but I am now gonna just turn off the heat. I will recover this and we're gonna let it cool completely so we can then wash it. And why recover it? This is gonna trap the heat in here for longer. It'll take longer to cool off, but that also will give more time for that color to set. And I wanna make sure it's completely set really, really badly. <laughs> I'll show you the pan in a moment, but the yarn has cooled and this is pretty. Oh man, this beautiful silvery tonal gray and that pink, whew, that is beautiful. So this is just some cool tap water and I've put it in carefully and I'm not seeing any bleeding. I'm not gonna add a tiny bit of some fish soap, but 
I am optimistic. I saw no dye left in the pan. Again, I'll show you that. I'm gonna wash the other two skeins together, but since our focus today is on this, ooh, I don't know if you guys can appreciate the shine I'm seeing right now. Since this skein is our focus, I wanted to wash it on its own. And what was I so afraid of? <laughs> I went slow. We made sure there was plenty of acid, and it is a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Now, I mean, we'll see if there's anything off with the texture or anything, but man, I, I want to get more of this and dye more of this. The one thing I was a little, like, I, in theory, if this were almost any other weight of yarn, I probably would have re-skeined it so that way I could have broken it up into mini skeins. Um, then I could have tried out multiple techniques on it. But I was nervous that the yarn might break under the tension. And so, but now, having created this and seeing no bleeding, um, I am feeling a lot more confident. And yeah, I'm gonna try to get more when it's back in stock. It, the problem is it's expensive, but okay, right, we'll, we'll see. I won't buy more until we see it dry. That silk yarn is waiting in the spin dryer. And here are the other two skeins. Um, I'm not gonna show the whole washing, but I'm gonna do the exact same thing. What I'm curious about, I mean, right away from adding the color, our silk blend, doesn't look as pigmented as our stroll. And we did add similar amount of dye to both. But this is one reason why I put the stroll in for comparison. Uh, so we will, I mean, we'll see how things look when they're dry. Wet, they're still pretty similar. Um, so anyway, I'll add some soap, rinse these, and put it all together in the spin dryer to remove as much liquid as possible and then we'll hang it to dry. Here is our pan, which looks as clear as if I had just added some plain tap water to it. And the reason why I'm so excited is because this week I filmed a different video, which had a lot of bleeding at the end and a lot of washing, and that's always frustrating. And one thing that I always get nervous about when, actually, I'm gonna pop in front of the camera. Hi! <laughs> so one thing I always get really nervous about when I'm trying something new is that the dye's not going to set, there's going to be a lot of washing, or that I'm somehow going to ruin the fiber and make it unusable. And by ruin, that is, and to some extent ruin is subjective, in that you can ruin a yarn if you think the colorway is really ugly, even though you could over dye, but there's different there's ruined where the yarn is burnt to a crisp and it falls apart if it bends. That's ruined, like, no question about it. Um, and, you know, there's ruined where yarn could be slightly felted, but you could still knit or crochet with it. So there's varying levels of what people might consider ruined until you get to the, yeah, this is, needs to be thrown away because it's completely unusable, uh, if that makes sense. But. I am so happy and this has been sitting in my stash for probably, gosh, maybe I bought this when they first released it because it was new. So it's been in my stash probably over a year and I, you know, it's funny because this whole YouTube channel is about me trying new things for the first time on camera, but I'm not afraid to admit that there are things that I'm afraid of. And it's not just that I'm afraid I'm gonna make mistakes. Uh, sometimes, I guess I tend to be more afraid when the cost of the materials is higher because if I make a mistake, then it's an expensive mistake. But I guess I also, like, I, I might seem really confident, but I'm just, I, I do get nervous and I do get scared sometimes when I'm trying something new. But I think that what I've been able to do is really that, I've learned that the best way to learn is to go for it and try. And I know I'm not reinventing the wheel as I discover different techniques, um, but I think other dyers might tell you this too, that you can get tips from people and you at home watching can get tips from me, but some of the things that I really like to do, you might not like to do. And so as artists, there is an element of preference that goes 
into all of this. And the real best way to learn is to take those chances. Uh, yeah, and then you could be so thrilled with the results. I want to thank you all for coming along on this journey and holding my hand while I'm nervous and celebrating with me when things come out really well. Uh, I really, really appreciate that. And really filming these videos allows me to be in my happy place. And so it's why I seem in these videos like I'm happy all the time. And I truly am a very bubbly person anyway, but playing with yarn like this allows me to channel my happy place and I like being able to share that special place with all of you. I think the only aspect that I truly censor myself is that I try not to swear in videos. <laughs> So that's one side I, I try to avoid showing, but I, I promise I do have points in my life I get sad and angry and frustrated and things like that, but there is something so liberating about creating these videos and I truly, truly am passionate about dyeing yarn and sharing my journey along for for all of you to join me and so if you enjoy this please subscribe and turn on notifications i release at least two new videos every single week and you don't want to miss it because we have fun and make mistakes and learn a lot along the way so subscribe here is the finished yarn that we dyed for this video we've got our luminance uh, 100% silk yarn. It's funny because of how cool it feels, it almost still feels damp even though it's not. We've got our gloss DK, or sorry, our gloss fingering weight yarn, which is 70% merino, 30% silk. And then we've got our stroll fingering weight yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Now, there's one difference you should be able to see immediately. And that is the final color on the silk yarn is much less saturated than the, the wool silk blend, than the superwash nylon blend. Our superwash nylon blend actually even has some white patches just because the colors struck so much faster on the skein than it did the other two. And so I think that if we wanted to get our 100% silk, this is gorgeous. If we wanted to get this as saturated as our superwash wool, we would have needed to use a lot more dye. And that is something that is, I think, just the case with silk. But oh, looking at this, I mean, this yarn is stunning. Uh, it is fantastic. And there are some light and dark patches in here, which it's almost hard to get a read on that tonal nature because it almost feels like the luminescence from the shiny silk. I mean, you know, if you look closely like, oh, that's not a reflection of the light. It's lighter there, it's darker there. But the coverage is really, really good, which I was nervous about because this doesn't feel like a very absorbent fiber. I feel like some of these differences are the most obvious around the pinks. And here in our silk, we've got some light and dark patches as well. Um, and then the gloss, um, which is lovely. And then our stroll, we have the deepest coloration. And I definitely did my best to try to apply color as evenly as possible. There is a slight possibility I did add more pigment to the stroll because colors were striking quickly, but overall, I mean, the color difference, like light to dark, is very, very apparent here. I can't believe that I was nervous to dye this yarn. I think I was afraid I'd create something I didn't like, and since the yarn base itself is so expensive, I wanted to do something that did it justice. But I mean, just look at the drape <laughs> that the skein has, even twisted up. This is a gorgeous yarn, and I know once it's available, I will be purchasing more to play with. I think this video is a good example of how sometimes you need to stop being scared and just go for it and try. But I also want to acknowledge that when you're dealing with a yarn or a fiber that's more expensive, being nervous is real and it makes sense. And so it is 
always okay to take mini skeins out of your yarn to have your tests. I mean, there's a lot of yardage in 100 grams of lace weight, so it wouldn't be unreasonable to make two 50 gram skeins or one 50 gram skein and a bunch of fives to just figure out how to get that color intensity that you want. And I think next time I might try breaking one of these up into smaller skeins just so that way I can explore, but maybe we can try looking at different depths of shade and explore more on this. But please let me know down in the comments what other techniques you'd like to see me explore on 100% silk like this. I do want to take a moment and acknowledge the privilege for when I say, hey, just go for it or buy one and break it up into minis because I know that buying a lot of bare yarn isn't necessarily affordable or accessible to everyone. Um, so one of the big reasons why I enjoy doing these videos is that you can see me play around with different techniques and while exploring on your own is the best way to learn, it maybe can help you decide on a starting point uh, for when you want to explore. Or you can then sort of see like, okay, I want to make a speckled yarn. Maybe I shouldn't try on a silk blend because the colors will spread more. You know, maybe it'll just help you make some choices as you get started. And so that's my goal. And if you find all this helpful, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. That is the biggest way that you guys can support what's happening, subscribing, liking, commenting on these videos. But as I talked about earlier in the video, if you want to bring your support to another level, you can go and check out the Patreon. Links will be in the description. I know stroll is a crutch of mine, and a lot of times I stick with it because if I'm trying a new to me technique, I want to do it on a yarn base that I know really well because that gives me sort of a control of something to compare it to. But yeah, I definitely need to challenge myself and use other fiber types and other yarn bases and play around with that more. Uh, so these are all things that I definitely have in mind. I am Rebecca from Cabinets, and thank you so much for watching. Oh wait, P.S. Which it's funny to have a P.S. in a Dye Pop P.S. episode, but here is the other colorway that I did on a wool silk blend using these exact same colors. I will have this as a separate video, so you should go and check that out. Thank you so much for watching.